Hi. So, so uh, sorry if the audio quality is a little uh, a little off. I don't have access to my usual recording space. Um, this is going to be a fairly brief video, though. We want to look at areas of wedges of circles. So, should also apologize for this. I am uh, going to have to draw directly on the screen. But we have, let's say we have a circle with some radius. And we've got some angle there. And we've created a wedge, like so, this shaded region. And we'd like to find the area of the wedge. And we can work it out. And let's assume that our angle is being measured in radians. So to work this out, let's start by just looking at the circle, the entire circle, this famous area formula. The entire circle has an area of pi times the radius squared. But we're not looking at the entire circle. We're looking at a fraction of the circle. And what fraction are we looking at? If we can answer that question, we can take this area, pi r squared, and multiply by the fraction. Like if this were half of the circle, its area would be half of pi r squared. If it were a fourth of the circle, the area would be a fourth of pi r squared, and so on. Well, there are two times pi radians in a circle. This wedge is theta radians. So the fraction of the circle this wedge takes up is theta over 2 pi. Our pi's cancel. And we wind up with theta over 2 times the radius squared. And notice that we needed this angle to be measured in radians because we used the fact that the angle was measured in radians there. When we said there were two pi radians in a circle, what if we measured our angle not in radians, but degrees. Well, the same basic argument would work, but now we've got theta out of 360 degrees. Our pi's don't cancel the way they canceled on this frame because we, well, because we only have one pi. We don't have this two pi in the denominator. And we get this much messier formula. So using radians here, 
gives us a much nicer formula. And that's really the take-home message of this section. We're not going to spend this class measuring a lot of areas. Um, the reason we present this material is to try to convince students, to try to reassure students that these radians that we're suddenly using might look kind of strange and it might be inconvenient to have to learn a new way of measuring angles, but we are deriving benefits from it. Using this new angle measuring method using radians gives us a nicer formula here than using degrees would give us.